first of all, making it so that women are welcome in the public sphere is a huge step. And when that isn't the case, then they can't really fulfill their full potential. Um, and I've, I've lived abroad multiple times in my life. I uh, grew up in the U.S., but I lived in Egypt for a year. I lived in India for two years. I've done research in Pakistan. Um, and definitely transportation was a barrier in getting things done. And so um, it's wonderful to see strides being made in that field, in that area of women's lives, uh, so that they can do what they need to do so that they can accomplish their goals. And I know certainly for me, in my research and work, nailing down a safe and convenient um, form of transportation is extremely important. When I lived in Lucknow, mm -hmm. in India, there really wasn't uh, good options for transportation. Literally, it yeah. was cycle rickshaws. Um, it was even hard to book your own independent rickshaw. Uh, there were only specific paths that rickshaws would take and um, auto rickshaws. And then booking a car was also quite a process. You know, you had to kind of find a specific company and there weren't many of them. So usually you just had to borrow someone's personal driver <laughs> or get a ride. Yeah. And for a student like myself who was living independently there, it was really tough to manage that. And um, similarly, I, when I did some research in Pakistan, probably 10 years ago, I had to book a car for the whole day. It was quite expensive. Um, when I was doing some research at the Lahore, Lahore High Court, so that, you know, that certainly took away some time and energy and, you know, financial uh, part of my budget that could have been used elsewhere when I was doing research. I think uh, always check in with yourself what seems like your, your path. Don't let other people guide that too much or dictate what that has to be because you need to be true to yourself. But on the other hand, you know, be kind to yourself and um, don't blame yourself for circumstances that are out of your control. You know, everyone has limitations that are placed on them, often structural as to what they can do. And so we're all working within that context. But I would actually say that our, our true empowerment comes from empowering each other. So to always keep in mind your personal career, your personal goals, but at the same time, think about what you're doing to empower others as well. The most promising thing that I see is that we are much more willing to highlight the stories of lots of different types of women and to celebrate many diverse types of empowerment. So I would want to continue along that trend. If there's not one way to be empowered, there's not one way to live a fulfilled life. There's so many different ways. Um, so that would be one thing. And I also think that we need to think about um, economic disparities and social disparities and try to really address those. I mean, you can have empowerment for a certain class of people, but you always have to keep in mind those who are being left behind and who have many, many barriers to overcome. So I think one thing that I would want to be different is to think about empowerment, not only for ourselves and people who are similar to us, but for people who are very different than us.